friends, it's me. And today we're gonna be doing some safety hacks. Mom hack of the day. Get a pool noodle and cut a piece of it off and put a slit down the middle and slide it onto your door like that. So when you close it, there's a bumper on the door and no matter how hard you try, no little fingers can get caught. Oh, that is actually really good. I'm like, what's the point of this? Your door can't close all the way. But if you have kids and you know, they always walk in like this with applesauce all over their fingers. And I know they try to reach in the door before you close it. This is only good for protecting children's fingers. If you don't care about children's fingers, it is useless. Unless you want a soft close on your door and it doesn't actually close. How do you know if a tsunami is coming? If you're ever at the beach and you see the water receding or far away from oh. where it normally is, run. This normally means a tsunami is coming and someone who paid attention in school in 2004 used this and saved their own life by getting out of there. So it's like the ocean's way of like bringing its hand back, winding it up, getting a big old slap ready but in the form of a tsunami. You know, when I was a child, I thought tsunamis and sinkholes and quicksand were gonna be a lot bigger of a problem than they actually are. Like, I thought that was it. That's how most people die. Find yourself buried in rubble and can't get out, don't yell. You'll end up just wasting energy and losing your voice. What you should do is grab something and start tapping in intervals of three. Humans are great at noticing patterns and the rescuers will start to move towards that. And once you hear them, then you can start yelling. Okay, this is good to know because if I was ever in that situation, the first thing I would do is yell uncontrollably. Why can't you guys hear me? I don't know. I'm like convinced if I yell at the top of my lungs, everybody will hear me. If that's not the case, we're gonna bang in intervals of three. And then people will be like, can somebody shut that bird up? I'm gonna be traveling soon and I'm gonna be staying at an Airbnb But all of these videos are making me nervous You gotta be careful because sometimes they got hidden cameras They got hidden audio devices, but at the end of this video, you'll know what to look for somebody about to catch a felony It is a crime to hide cameras and secretly record your guests who are paying to stay there a very common one is this charger It looks like a regular charger, right? Plug your USB in it. It has a hidden camera on top of the USB port unplug it it, turn it around. We've got a memory card in there. Whoo! Gotta check everywhere. Oh, we got the cops called. Hey, I would love to go through that memory card. Some juicy footage of me blowing up your toilet. So this is how you find hidden cameras in your Airbnb or in your hotel room. Take this fire alarm for instance. It's placed right above the bed. Now one way to see if a device is a camera is to shine a bright light at it. If you hit a camera lens, it's gonna give a bluish reflection. Now you can test this by shining a light at your phone and seeing how the camera looks. They even got cameras in the smoke detector? That is messed up. So basically you want to turn off all the lights, make the room as dark as possible, and then shine your phone flashlight at the suspicious object. The clock radio is a camera. The wall charger is a camera. So basically if you have an object like pointed towards your bed or your bathroom or the shower or any place you're gonna get naked and dirty, everything can have a hidden camera. So there is a little light device that you can buy. You flash it all over your room. I don't know how they saw that. I could barely see anything. It looked like a bean to me. They got cameras in the weirdest spots. If it's on the fan, what is it gonna see? The blades going round and round? So soon I'm gonna be going to an Airbnb. I'm gonna be honest, the host seems very suspicious and I do not trust. So if you think I should try these hacks out in real life in a video, make sure you hit that like button in the face. And I just might. Safety tips that can save your life. Okay, another thing that I'm very uneasy about, staying in a hotel room. I always put something over the door handle, but I didn't know you could do it with like a clothes hanger. Oh, so it gets the lock and the handle, so you can't open it. Can't move the lock, can't open the handle. You know what I do? I get the glasses, not these, but like a glass cup and put it on the handle. So if anybody is like trying to open it, it'll fall on the ground, create a loud noise and shatter. Also, I am a very light sleeper. I hear somebody exhale at the front door. I am wide awake. My slumber has been disturbed. All my girls are gonna share this because we have each other's back. If your ice floats to the top of the drink, it is safe to drink. If the ice sinks down to the bottom, that means there is something in your drink and you need to toss it. Also, don't be walking around with your drink, sitting it down and like bringing it with you like it's a little dog. Yes, thank you for drink. Drink finished. Excellent. If you are a clumsy idiot, oh, that is sharp. You see the way it just penetrated that peach? You know what? We're gonna need the baby guards. Even though there's no baby in this household. Oh, you know what? Actually, I am baby. If you are clumsy, every single corner of your house, just stick a bubble on every single corner in your household. Safe for idiots. 
There is a gadget that you can buy that will protect your little fingers when you have to hammer nails. Oh, it's like a little crab claw. Oh, it's magnetic. So it holds the nail in place. What if you have really bad aim while hammering and I'm just, ah, oh, my wrist. I'm working on becoming stronger. Okay, but this is, might actually be something that I need. Especially while drilling something, like I can never hold something in place and just like, mm. I am not a very handy man, but I am quite the dandy man. Can a bra be used to help you escape? I don't know, can it? So I've seen this on TikTok where they have their hands duct taped together and if you just like pfft, separate it in a movement like that, I mean, you kind of have to be a little strong to be able to do that. Oh, and then you use your shirt to just like saw it open? This will probably only work if they do like one row of duct tape. You think the kidnappers don't have TikTok? Now they know what not to do. Oh, she did it with her bra. Victoria's secret was that she was also an escape tool and she sawed her way through it. Okay, I guess you can use any article of clothing and just like <laughs> break free. Camping alone as a woman, safety tips. That's kind of scary. Wouldn't that get lonely? I ain't never heard of somebody going camping by themselves. Like you, usually you bring somebody with you, spend time with somebody out in the wild. Who are you gonna tell your scary stories to? Yourself? And they'll scare you even more. Hang boy clothes in visible location. <laughs> Just in case you have any funny ideas, a man is actually in this tent. Y'all can't be hanging up O'Neal shirts. Hang up some dickies or something. Nobody will mess with you. Step two, place boy shoes outside of tent. <laughs> Somebody walks up to the tent. Oh, <gasps> Mandals? No, no, I ain't gonna mess with this guy. Nah, not today. Mr. Man Sandals will mess me up. Use an S binder micro lock inside of tent. It's like a lock for your tent. So if anybody tries to unzip, they will struggle. And in the time that they are struggling, you have time to pull out the pew pew. Sharing one of my safety tips as a female who lives alone. This is a door stop alarm. Someone tries to open the door, it stops the door from opening and sets off an alarm. Oh, so it's like a two in one. So like it stops the door from sliding open and it'll make a really loud noise. Okay, I feel like everybody that lives alone needs something like this or just extra security on your door. Like a lot of apartments, it's just a door and most people can just like bust it down if they really wanted to. So it's nice to have like an extra level of security. Also, if someone's breaking in and a very loud alarm goes off, the burglar will get scared. So scared that he might piss himself. Nobody will take you seriously if you just pissed your pants. A woman is performing the gap test on a bathroom mirror. It fails, meaning that it is a one-way mirror. So if you put your finger up to a mirror and there is no gap in between the reflection and it looks like your fingers are just touching each other, that means it's a one-way mirror and there is somebody watching you behind the mirror. Next time you go to your bathroom, test it out on your mirror so you know what I'm talking about. Like put your finger up to the mirror. See, there is a gap when she does it in her mirror at home. You know it's gonna be safe unless mother and father are spying on you. So whenever you're in a sketchy place, public bathroom, dressing room, always put your finger up to the mirror and do the gap test. This, yes, good mirror. Get naked, pluck your ingrown hairs, grow crazy. This, two, this is a two-way mirror. Press your butt cheeks against it and let it rip. They made their kitty a vest for when he plays outside. They took a human reflective vest, cut it up. Oh, the cat is reflective. Excellent. I don't know how some people just like let their cat outside and then trust the cat to just do whatever they want and then the cat will just come back home. You leave them out. That ain't your cat anymore. They belong to the streets. When they leave your house, like you don't know where they go. You don't know who they're with. You don't know what they do. Doesn't that bother you? I know I have dogs and they are so helpless. They would not last five minutes in the wild. But like, I could never just like let a cat outside and let them do whatever they want and then hope they come back home. Like I would be so nervous just all day waiting for them. Oh, uh, you know, they always come back home where the food is. If you're traveling with cash, you wanna hide it in the least expected place. Inside your deodorant. Who's gonna look in there? Open the cap. Try to get a whiff of what your pits are gonna smell like. I was expecting free smells, not a hundred dollar bill. If you find yourself caught in a wildfire, here's how to survive. You're in a wildfire, what do you do? Um, stop, drop, and roll? Literally run from the fire? First, put your shirt over your nose and mouth to limit smoke inhalation. Start moving downhill because wildfires move faster uphill. Um, yes. If there is a fire on a hill, I am going to go down. I'm not going to go further up the hill and into the fire. So if the wind is blowing towards the fire, run into the wind. If the wind is blowing behind the fire, run perpendicular to the 
wind. Run perpendicular to the wind, okay? Move to a place with limited fuel for the fire to burn. That could be a rocky area, a water source, or an area that's already been burned. Good luck. She said it like I just entered the Hunger Games. Like, there will be a wildfire, but that's gonna be the least of your problems. Uh, good luck. <laughs> Cheap ways to keep your apartment safe. Buy a motion sensor beeper. You can get them on Amazon and it makes a loud beep when the door is open. My security system gave me some of these. I didn't know you could just buy them. Whenever you open and close a door, whenever you open and close a cabinet, very loud beep. Beep make burglar yeet. But anyways, that's all for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope you learned something new. If you did, make sure to hit that like button in the face. And make sure you turn on notifications. Click, click, and subscribe to join the wolf pack. I love you guys so much. Thanks for watching. Bye, guys.